Good evening, guys. What's going on? How you doing? We're going through a special presentation. We are going to jump in on some sim racing. You know, we're going to stay on our schedule. We're going to stay and stick to our guns. But from the positive feedback that I was getting from everyone before, um, I wanted to actually just give you an example of what I'm normally working with on my schedule and um well it's just a part of it but uh just give you a brief overview hey what's up guys all right so as you can see this is different <laughs> right now before we even jump in on everything i wanted to just give you a basic editing overview so what that means is that what you guys see that i'm normally doing as far as the sim racing and gaming and whatnot that is the other side of me the first side of me the you know professional side that does all the the, the work to you know get everything done in the first place i've been working with a lot of different companies in this field for a while and i started off doing post-production editing first before i ever started to touch a camera before i even got a camera in my hands so what i wanted to do is just go over basic 
overview of the editing system, at least in the Adobe Premiere Suite, Adobe, excuse me, the Adobe Creative Suite with Adobe Premiere. And this is essentially just the basics that I would go over with every student. Uh, I've gone through this with quite a few clients um, privately in classrooms, uh, in private colleges, um, trade schools, you name it. And one thing I wanted to actually focus on here was just the overview of the system where you can get into the cutting and the speed cutting and doing everything at a fast pace much later. But what I started to learn going through the Unreal tutorials was essentially how to explain <laughs> the environment a little bit more rather than just jumping in and cutting, cutting, cutting and expecting you to know what's going on. So this is the general overview of the Adobe Creative Suite. So here is our project window, right? Here we have the storage of all of our files. Now, as you can see, these are a bit mixed up, <laughs> a little bit unorganized. So we're going to go through the motions of actually doing that as well. So let us get started. All right, guys. So overall, here we go. We have the project window here. This is where you store all of your files. This is where you have your sound. This is where you have everything. You can rename everything here. You can expand the window. You would float on the window and you press the tilde key, the little squiggle key that's right underneath your escape key on the top left hand corner of your keyboard. Click that and it makes any window that you hover over with your mouse full screen. This is especially helpful if you need to have more detail in your search and you can't really do too much in a small window. This is almost critical. Really simple, but very, very effective. Now, in order to do anything here, let's open this up in your actual project window. We have all of our files here. We have, these are timelines, these little icons right here. These are our timelines. These are our folders or bins. You can rename them. I have music stored in here. And these are files with the little question marks. That means that they're offline. That means that I was using them previously, but I erased them most likely because I didn't have any use for them any, any longer. And of course, these are clips. So you can see the little film strip and the audio icon next to them. Those are your clips. And here we have images and adjustment layer. I'll explain that to you shortly. And what we're going to do first is create a new folder. So what you can do, right click here in within the space anywhere and you get your secondary window, new bin, new item. This is where you can create new sequences, new projects, an offline file, adjustment layer, everything listed here. Now, what you want to do just to make things a lot faster, let's open this a little bit here these little brackets now as you can see the file format at the tail end png tiff png all image files yes so let's grab all of these let's omit the adjustment layer hold down control and left mouse key and we can do one of two things in order to get the same result right click new bin from selection and that will create folder from the selected icons you see here. Or, let's control Z and undo that. Let's delete this best, make sure nothing's in here because we might lose our stuff. Or, what I like to do because I find it to be a little bit faster, just simply select them and drag to the folder icon within the project window. Same thing. I find it to be a little bit faster at times because, you know, it's just right there. It's much more intuitive. You don't necessarily have to do two clicks. It's just one drag done. I would just name this images. I personally like to capitalize everything because it's catchy to the eye and I know what I'm looking at. Some people might find it unreadable, but for me, it helps me catch. It catches my eye toward the priority of whatever it is I'm supposed to be paying attention to. Now, 
here we have our timelines we do the same thing now this is just basic organization a little ocd here let's call this our timelines your keyboard now if you double click let's shrink this window again so we can understand where we are now with these folders right you can click on this little carrot and it expands this folder if you double click on it it opens the folder in its own little tab which is cool because there's a lot of times where i'll need to go back to my main folder excuse me my main navigation area and still scroll through the main files but still want to have my subfolder open and in here also i can go into icon view you can get a preview of what's happening in a timeline hover over a lot of these are offline files you can just hover over it and hover scrub which is pretty cool they introduced this a while ago it's pretty much a standard now but adobe started having this back in like cs 5.5 or whatever anyhow so yeah that's how you create a folder here we have a small collection of windows so we're gonna just keep this simple <laughs> for our images actually excuse me let's clean this up a little bit more and let's add all of our online files everything that you can see here and we're going to do the same add in there there we go clips just get these other little errant ones we just drag them all in there honestly they're all mp4s whatever doesn't go then we just delete, delete them separately just to clean everything up there's an audio file we'll leave that errant right now and from here we can start to search through let's double click on this folder we can search through our clips we can expand here at the bottom we have freeform view we have grid view freeform view is pretty much you can just move these anywhere and I guess you could say a basic layout setup. You can set everything up uh, in a scripted format. And of course you have your hover ability for every single one of the clips. And from here, click on to any one of the clips we have one right now for a sega game this is scud race let's mess around with this must be fun so here once you double click on any of the clips they come up right here in your source window of course your source window is where you're searching you're scrubbing through everything i have this running at 1440p <laughs> that's my voice in it for the voiceover for that all right so say we find something we can just scrub through here if we like something and we want to actually use it from our source window to here, our timeline, this is where we do all of our work. You would essentially scrub through your clip and on your keyboard, you press I for in and O for out. Now, I for in is essentially where your clip cut will begin. So click here and say you want to just let it play back. Let's play back for a second. Nice Sega Saturn. That's dope. Yeah, that's something I always loved about. I'm gonna stop here, press O. Now, two ways to do this as well. In Premiere, there are a lot of ways to actually get certain things accomplished. We can literally drag with the mouse or we can use the shortcuts. Now that's essentially, the shortcuts are really the bread and butter of everything when it comes down to how you'll get projects done with speed. But we're just gonna do this simply for the time being. We're gonna work on this timeline and I'll show you how to work on this later in our next tutorial. So let's go to this end of this timeline here. Actually, let's create a new timeline. Let's go to project media here, back to our root folder. And with the little in point and out point, if you want to see more of this timeline here, but if you want to expand on it, you can press plus or minus on your keyboard. Oh, wrong window. <laughs> plus and minus on your keyboard for the window that you clicked on. And you can see much more detail in your clips runtime. So what we're going to do here is grab this clip, literally just click on your mouse and drag down here, 
here is where you create a new sequence and it will create the sequence based on the parameters of the clip that you just cut from. So let go new sequence. It'll name it after the actual clip base profile blah, blah, didn't name it and you can name it yourself. Let's call this Sega super GT sample. Got the problem spelling. <laughs> And you can see the timeline over here. If you want a timeline to come up, just click on it. You can be on another timeline. If you want to click on this one and go to it, click on it, it comes right up for you. So let's scrub through this here. All right, so we can see all of our clips metadata. Well, not all of it, but a preview of our clips metadata here in this window. So you can see this is done at 60 frames, filmed at 1440p. And if you right click on the timeline here within your project window, so let's go over this again, your project window, source window, timeline, and this is the playback program window. Everything you do in your timeline plays back here. So keep those three points. Those are the basics of three point editing. Bong, bong, bong. Project, source, timeline. Now, just to check out our metadata, you right click on your timeline, your newly created timeline here. And here we go. Let's see properties. And this is where you can actually see the properties of your timeline. And you can do the same thing for any of your clips. Which one was this? Now, if you need to find a specific clip within your timeline, but you can't really find it immediately, say here, and you're a little bit mixed up with so many files, what you can do, this helps me search through them really quickly. Click on the clip itself on the timeline. You can see the name of it, but you don't know where it is in your folders. Right click. And this is where you would go to reveal in project. See, reveal in project, your project window. Click. There you are. That's the clip. And this is where you can actually see on the clip itself. Right click. Properties. And you see the properties of the clip. You can see your color space. You can see pretty much everything. If you start doing a little bit of post-production studies. Some of this will make sense to you. Uh, for those who are just starting, we'll go over this in a later tutorial as well. But this is just to understand what's going on overall. So now you've got your clip in your timeline. Nice Sega Saturn. That's dope. Yeah, that's something I always loved about Now say I want to cut around the audio, right? Like, ah, I don't want to hear this guy's voice. This guy's voice is a little bit annoying. <laughs> So let's explain what the timeline is overall. These are your different channels. It starts off by default with uh, three channels for your video, three channels for your audio. The mix I pretty much never use too much, but I believe this is just your overall channel mix. But I, I've been using this program for years and years and years and years. This is essentially, it seems like it's just the playback channel. As you're playing back, of course, you can see your audio metering right here. Let's take a Saturn. And this is also something you want to pay attention yeah, to when you're starting to do your audio mixes. So if you want to expand your window here, this section right here in your channel to see more of your audio waveform, what you can do, you can do two things. You can go right over here to your bracket, pull it down and expands it, or you just double click it and expands also. But sometimes you might want it to be larger so you can expand it even more. Now, this is really useful when you're doing a lot of web video because web video prides itself on fast cuts that stay within the context of a conversation or around a conversation. And a good tip for this is to pay attention to your waveforms and you end up cutting more so around this than you do this. You'll understand what I mean about this later in another tutorial. But for right now, this is just a general tip that I've learned from doing a lot of reels and shorts and TikTok videos and Instagrams, you name it. So if you just want to show a little bit of action, but cut around the dialogue or even keep the dialogue, let's say we want to keep the dialogue, right? We can expand on this. Let's drag this clip a little bit further out. Now, since we saw that we cut more so into our source clip for the timeline, we do know we have more information before our endpoint. And this is where our endpoint begins in the timeline. So we can drag open our clip. So all of this is non-destructive. You can keep using this going back and forth. It doesn't get destroyed when you click over it. 
try not to slip. You can still slip out in this game. You can spin out. Now, if this were a YouTube video, I'd let this ride. But if we're doing this for Instagram or TikTok or anything of that nature, we need this to speed up and be very fast paced. So what we can do, let's drag this to the beginning of the timeline, is focus here where we see the voice spiking and cut within that area. So in order to cut anything, we're going to do two ways. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. We will use the razor tool and we will use the shortcut keys. Now the razor tool, of course, you go basically just click on it and wherever you are, you press space bar on your keyboard. You try not to slip. You can still slip out in this game. You can spin out. Stop. Take your razor tool, slice. Now your razor tool will slice according to what's highlighted within your channels. In order to undo, you press control Z. And in order to cut pretty much all of your clips, when you start stacking them, you would start to mess around with these other channels as well. But for right now, we're gonna just slice forward. See it starting up again, pause, slice, delete. Press control V in order to go back to your move tool. So you have to go to your selection tool because if you try to actually go here and select the clip, you'll just cut up the clip and it won't help. You'll need to actually go to your selection tool so that it literally just selects the clip as the object. You press delete. And there you go. Bring these two together. Now, another way to do it is control Z to go undo is to click on the clip and press and hold, press and hold shift and press delete. And it does what's called a ripple delete. It deletes what's here and pulls in the timeline to magnetically snap forward in order to fuse the two clips right. together. Then out, nice Sega Saturn, that's dope. All right, so see, it's becoming more of a fast paced like conversation. Try not to slip, you can still slip out in this game. You can spin out, nice Sega Now, Saturn. the way I do it now, and this is honestly a good way for you to learn from the beginning, trust me, it's good to learn it now, are basic keyboard shortcuts. So, let's go to our, go to edit, top left hand corner, keyboard shortcuts. And here you'll see the wealth of stuff that you can add and well, pretty much subtract. You can customize the keyboard to your liking. I have these right here. So let me show you how you can actually set this up. Let's delete this off. I believe, can you delete this? Yes, delete. Delete the keyboard set, yes. All right, so let's just start from the beginning. So F2, I pretty much use to render the entire timeline. That essentially helps you when you're trying to move faster and you needed to do a preview render for the whole timeline rather than it just playing everything back in real time. And having a render for your timeline actually helps because it can speed things up. You will have to wait for the render, but it does make you move faster if you're trying to use certain video clips such as 4K and your system might be a little bit slow, then rendering would be good. So what we'll do here, we can see all of our actions, our preset actions within this list. So we're gonna search and do render, R-E-N-D-E-R, Render entire work area where I would drag or click on the actual function and drag it. And it stays. Now for F3, I have for deselect. No, actually clear in point out, clear in and out. And this is when I have a bunch of endpoints and outpoints on my timeline that I want to just get rid of. I do clear in and out really quickly and just put it here in my F3 key. And I have F4 also, what do I usually have F4 for? Ah, replace clips within source monitor. I'll show you how to do that. I put in F4. Now, of course, you can customize this in any way that you like, but with these F keys that are pretty much, they're still free, so are your number pads. If you have that available, of course, you can customize it pretty, pretty sweetly, you know? 
if you're coming from, say, a Final Cut Pro background, this would be good for you. I came from a, um, a Final Cut 7 background back in the day before I got started on this. And Adobe Premiere 3, or CS3, I believe, had the keyboard set up for that for people to convert over. So that said, you can convert it to your liking. So now for keyboard shortcuts, ah, let's go back. Here. You can go for cut or slice. It's named slice, right? Okay, cut, cut. okay, so I have my setup as control K. Now control K is much faster. <laughs> you don't have to use the actual slice icon tool. It's showing as control X, but it's actually control K that I have set up right over the clip and just press control K. Let's try that one more time. So wherever your search bar is, yeah, that's dope. playback bar, this is your playback bar right here. Wherever it is, let's pause it and press hold control K much faster. And the last thing I'll show you guys before we wrap this up, we're going to take a quick break and jump into some gaming is quick edits qw 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 i, I praise this <laughs> i seriously praise this all the time like it's a religion qw saves lives like like gaff tape does on set it is essentially your speed editing tool just two buttons that help you in the beginning and the end of your clip if you're looking at it vice versa <laughs> the beginning and the end of your clip your bookends of your clip so let's try that out So within this little clip, let's undo this. Of course, we saw that we wanted to stay right here. Control K, a shortcut, default shortcut. You can customize it the way you want, but there's a default shortcut. Scroll on over. Now, Q, just so you know, let's go to our keyboard shortcuts. Q, it has it as ripple trim previous edit to playhead. Ripple trim next edit to playhead. What that means is that the beginning of your playhead, this section right here, see how it brackets to the left and to the right. Right is the end, left is the beginning. The beginning of your playhead, excuse me, the beginning of your clips. These are your clips, sorry. These are the beginning of your clips and the ends of your clips. Wherever you have your playhead right here, and you press Q, which represents the beginning of your clip, not W, W is the end of your clip. You press Q, it will clip, it will cut, excuse me, right in this space. Let's press Q. And as you can see, it ripple deletes and cuts right at that section of the playhead. Let's do that one more time. Again, in order to expand and contract your timeline, you click on your plus and minus symbols in the top of your keyboard. So let's go right here again, right at the beginning of the waveform. When he starts talking, he being me, I guess, <laughs> Q right at the beginning of your playhead, excuse me, right at your playhead at the beginning of your clip. And this seems all good here. Let's expand this clip a little bit more. I think I was saying a little bit more gibberish. Level design. I want to say the, the, the track design. They've always made the tracks. So let's just say, let's make this, let's say we want to just cut this right here, right at the end. So we've already made our front cut right here at the playhead. Yeah, that's something I always loved about Sega's arcade level design. Stop. And you press Q and it will correspond to the end. See? Try it again. Control Z to undo. We've got Q here. We've already queued this section. And we want to do right at this section for W. And there you go. That is essentially a quick speed edit tip. This will just get you out of so many situations so quickly. Literally and facetiously. <laughs> Try not to slip. You can still slip out in this game. You can spin out. Nice Sega Saturn. That's dope. Yeah, that's something I always loved about Sega's 
arcade and we can even trim this more there's a bit of a space when it's when i'm saying arcade and then this section so if you just want to speed that up control k like we just discussed expand go in q yeah that's something i always loved about sega's arcade level design we need to do this even more so we thought this here was the end excuse me we thought this was the speech point it wasn't it's just me going mm. so we do it right here instead q the beginning of the play section excuse me of the beginning of the clip there you go arcade level design and there you go you can expand more to see where it was going the conversation it's not really going anywhere but you know streaming gibberish sega's arcade level design you can stop here control k to cut here because we want to keep that section we don't want to just z this excuse me we don't want to control w design. this we don't want to w this i'm going to use the term just qw rather than control qw so you guys understand where i'm coming from from there from here on out you don't want to w this section because you'll kill the whole portion of your end clip right there control z so you want to control k excuse me you just want to k it cut it right there q there you go level design oops excuse me arcade level design i want to say their their track design they've always made the their their, their track design that's it we can cue it right there and cut that arcade level design i want to say their their, their track design and there you go so those are the basics just bare bones basics of a premiere so one more time we've got our project window source window timeline window and a program where you see all of your playback and lastly before we close out this is your effects window i usually have it around here i started doing this in cs3 i've been using it like this ever since <laughs> so i have my favorites folder but this is where you can find all of your basics presets that adobe creates themselves Lumetri presets, these are for color grading, color correction, things of that nature. So you can do like monochrome, faded, drag into your clips, you can see. See, all types of different visual effects. And you can start from here if you like. Oh, I didn't grab it, carry over. And you can start from here if you like with effects. You see Lumetri right here within your effects panel. Now, these are pretty much all of your windows you can modify, right? But the base windows that have always been a thing with Premiere starting off, of course, your project, source, timeline, and program is a, is a byproduct of your timeline. And you can tap pretty much any window anywhere. So you can put your effects window here if you like. But I like to keep it in the center because it's, it keeps us a sense of organization. And I know I'm going from left to right all the time, and it's much easier to read, I guess you could say. But within your clip, you'll find all of your basic effects, your motion effects, so you can scale, rotation. If you make it a 3D object, then you can do Z rotation. If you go to see Lumetri color here, Lumetri has its own tab, its own section. That's where you do your color, color, color grading and your color correction. That's where you do your color grading and your color correction. And you can open it also through window. And each one of these windows can be set up as separate tabs. Lumetri color. There you go. And that's where you can start messing through things around. This already has the preset, the little monochrome contrast that we drag to the clip. Of course, we can start messing around and going through all of our customization, but we'll save that for another time. All right, guys, so that's it just for this section right now. We're going to take a short break and we're, well, what do we normally do? We're going to come back. We're going to do some, uh, we're going to do some gaming. <laughs> so um, if you have any questions on this matter, please let me know. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's some things that I've missed, but as far as your basic three point editing setup, always remember where you, where you essentially want to have things stored. And that's your project window where you want to start doing your operations. That's where your source window would be, <laughs> excuse me. And of course, where you would want to have 
your actual overall project being cut up, and that is your timeline. You have your clips, you can drag it straight to your timeline and cut on your timeline, or in order to be more organized to a certain degree, you, you can do this also if you're trying to be fast, because it really depends on the type of project that you're working on. Or another way, of course, is that you bring it into your source window and you cut from there and you drag it to your timeline. So those are the basics, just overall. It's over this guy's mug. So, <laughs> so guys, any questions, please um, let me know. I am more than happy to address anything. If you feel like you misunderstood, if I didn't explain things a little bit more thoroughly than I should have, let me know. If you have any questions on certain functions, where what happens with certain windows, what happens when certain things don't function, let me know. And um, that's what I'm here for. So I'm going to take a short break and we'll be back. So stay tuned.
All right, what's going on, guys? We're back in game mode. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, welcome back. We're gonna jump into some AC. Uh, let's see what we can do with low fuel motorsport and uh, these MX5 challenges. Tried to do one earlier and it <laughs> did not work out to say the least. Oh wait, let's get our fun cam up. Hold on, hold on now. Fun. All right, there we go. Now we're good. So, um, <laughs> here what we got for LFM because it's been a little rough, to say the least. Haven't been able to complete a race today. Okay, we got an MX5 in Hockenheim. Now, Hockenheim was the one that they were doing earlier today, so let's stick to that. Obviously, it's not much of a choice. Let's sign up. Yes, I'm willing. Yes, sign me up. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right, let's get some practice. Next 20 minutes. Let's say. Got the next 28 minutes. Okay, cool. All right, let's join up. Some ginger tea. That is good. With the audio. Say at least. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> I never notice how uh, bold my voice sounds until I have to hear it played back to me. I was like, good God. That's what you guys listen to? <laughs> All right. Let's get into the mode. Let's get into our mode mode. Ah, uh, okay. I, I didn't cut a lap, but whatever. All right, alignment. How did we had it at? Let's see, I guess we'll be getting some understeer. Okay, so that's a bit. I mean, that helps, but I also have to be a little bit more careful with the. Let's see, do it at 62. We well, might as well just use one then, if that's the case. My first setup. Just like that. Yeah, it's the first setup. Let's do it two. Fighting chance before it heats up. All right. Actually, I should probably save these settings. That would help. So this is this first setup. Actually, let's uh save over it. Yeah. All right. LFM practice. All right. Yeah, what pick is chicken? You hear it. So I really didn't put too much time into Hockenheim until really today. Even I had the course, I played it a few times. Messed around with it a few times and I didn't start really focusing on it seriously until today. Out. Going forward. 
Let's make a hard right. Let's launch straight. flat out just yet. And I kind of can, but I still got to be careful. Ooh. Horseshoe. Oh. Oh, no, not yet. No horseshoe yet. This one I keep messing up. It throws me off visually. It just blends in together into this weird blob. Especially when it's really just gray. So my eyes have to get used to the track. So we gotta work on that. Alright, so getting too much drag in the rear. And that's because the strut tower bar. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the best way is to get the best turn in from there. One one. So let's lower this right hat as much as possible. Just two minutes left, two minutes to go. The practice? Yes. Just refresh the server. getting some body roll in the front, stiffer in the rear, even by one click, and that's helping. Or in the right height help also, so it's not too much. It's doable. Technically, it's refreshed because everyone's gone. It's gonna jump in again. Mm 
Okay, I like the way this feels. Let's jump into another one. Have a few of these up. <clears throat> oh. oh, shit. Ready, 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 back to practice. Okay, we got like 15 minutes or so left. Oh, cool. safer than I thought. It's being cautious. I've gotten too used to the unpredictable grip slip of uh, ACC, so it's kind of making me a little apprehensive here sometimes. This bank. Clear right. 
<laughs> That's why I did that slowdown. Exactly what you're going through right there. Keep messing that up. I'm gonna see. I need a reference point. This is mushed together there. Come on, damn it. I'm looking, I, I, I have the no reference point. I don't know what's up. I'm just not locking, like visually, I can't see that point. It's throwing me off. I have to get over that. time we got you have been idle four minutes well nine minutes 
Ah, server opens in nine. It's actually worse when it's the live server. Like as sunny as it is right now, it's not. <laughs> I've done it earlier and it's just flat gray. So it's even more difficult to distinguish visually. So I need to get over that hump. I need to figure something out. Too much. Hope we did it. Over did the overstairs that lead down the stair. I need a reference point. Ah, oh, okay. Watch the track limits. Please call. Okay, can't do that. Okay, so I got the reference point there. It's all the way into the right. I'm looking for it in the center, and there's nothing in the center because it's not in the center. <laughs> but now it's just to balance out the entry. section. Hey, that was better. 
I think. Damn. Do that. Whoa, man! What the hell? That was nowhere near where he needed to be. Strips. Touch the strips. Yellow flag. Come on, and 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 damn it. Damn it, really? Give me no wiggle room there. What are you doing? Why? He's trying to follow me so close. What are you following me so close for? Slow there, very slow there. Good too.
Same thing we're jumping out now. We have to go deeper out. So. Turn me into the road. Did that. Ah. Okay. All right. Where are we? Where are we? Is the server available? We are we. We we go. All right, let's give it a try. Oh crap! Oof. Well, okay. Well, at least you got a little bit there. You don't have to do without completely. Yeah, you're definitely going to need some break time to yourself. Sheesh. Or at least just a little bit of time away. All right. Now, in qualies, we know we want to use. And what we want to do. Uh, uh, uh. Eh, eh, eh. All right, we are good to go. That's actually sweet of her. She's actually being considerate. That's different, but it's showing the vulnerability, and that's a good thing. Who's just everyone adding me on Facebook? Alright. I'm not even sure if I should get theories with the quality if I possibly can. Feels like a time is better to just start at the back. Just get run the hell over. See? It's harder to see. Everything is just mushing together into a great blob for me visually. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. What are you doing? Come on, man. That was the trouble I had earlier. Idiots. Idiots. Just morons, man. Damn. 
Gotta keep running like you watch what you're doing. What the hell is wrong with y'all? I haven't been on this wheel for less than a year and it feels like I can drive better than y'all do. <laughs> just be running right into you, not paying attention or just being sloppy. But you do realize that low fuel motorsport is for ranking up, right? So you might want to not be a dumbass. Not going to get very far if you do. These morons. They don't think. They just do shit. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, this portion I gotta really get with here. What I'm looking at, alright. It just blends into a greenish bluish blob. Why is that idiot slowing down like that? In the middle of the road. What are y'all doing, man? <laughs> what are y'all doing? Are you intentionally griefing? Why? Like, what? why? See that section. Damn, I hate that.
Come on. Okay, let's just do ourselves a bit of a service and put on TC for that section. So I'm trying to push it fast, and I know people are using TC, and I'm over here coming at the hard way. I can see that section. Any of it, actually. <sighs> oh, crap. I hope it's the person that was uh, jerking around earlier. Definitely don't need that in LFM. It's already bad enough in the casual lobbies, but we're all trying to rank up here. Everybody's, insane. well, I would say most people are trying to move up in the most honest way possible and not be briefing jerk offs. <laughs> Position markers are all wrong. I need it because it's showing me to laugh also. Alright. Let's do this like Brutus so we can shoot us. Oh! Wrists. Take a short break after this. Not aligned. Go. Right, here we go with the goofiness. That section. On your right. Hold your line. Still there. Still there. Clear right. Car 
The sea. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to move in, trying to move in. Oh, come on, come on. I'm already out and you guys are just diving in there. Come on now. Jesus. Chaos, chaos. Lost place. Come on, damn it, man. Stay in the track. Come on. Shit. Trying. I'm getting knocked around. I'm getting these weird drops just throwing me off at the frame rate. Come on, man! Damn! Yo, what the f Done. Done. Like, see what I mean? Alright, taking a break. God damn. We'll be back. Jesus, yo. I cannot with that, man. People just...
dive bombing in there, man. Damn. They're not even slowing down. It's just uh, right in there. Jesus Christ, man. Like, I, how am I going to rank up? How am I going to rank up? How? These people play like dumbasses. I'm sorry, y'all. That is just aggravating, man. Because I'm trying to do my best because I want to move up. If it was just casual lobby and we're just jerking around, you know, like, okay, I'll get annoyed, but I'll just play around. We're trying to rank up. And they still play like jackasses. Like, I'll take a break. I'll be back. Like, that is angering. Jesus Christ, man.
All right, we are back. Not really sure what to say with this. <laughs> it's dejecting to say the least because it's making it nigh impossible. And feels like the only way I'm going to be able to rank up is if I join someone's special locked lobby of some sort. It's no control over anything in low Q Motorsport. So, yeah, next one is in an hour, 29 minutes. Yeah, so we're going to X-Nay on this. And just do some casual lobby racing because why not? <laughs> yeah, it's just monkeys, man. Absolute monkeys. It just cannot not drive like idiots they just have to be morons <laughs> God. okay stick with our mclaren love some casual gt racing it's the best we're gonna get out of it right now Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Casual GT racing, because trying to do anything ranked and take it seriously is not working right now. Maybe it's the time of day. I don't know. But we're not going to stress ourselves with that because it's already bad enough. Like, really? Oh, Lord, man. That's just unbelievable having i'm not sure how you guys deal with that i need to figure out a way to but i have the lowest tolerance for stupidity like that <laughs> i really do i'm not sure how you guys can stomach that um and just you know i guess it's something to get used to you got to no choice right really no choice but damn, man. So this race is nearly done. Winter set up the spa. Semi winter. Trees are still green. Flag. 
What the hell? On your left. Clear left. For ignoring blue flags? I'm not in the way! I'm following the line! Just get up! What? Like, uh, you, you're right there on the line. I'm supposed to jump off the damn line in the corner just to let you through? What the hell? You, you go, you over, you pass over in the straight. What? What the hell, people? What's going on? <laughs> Jesus, man. Just, just, like, I see them coming, but I'm already on a bank. I can't, I can't move. You, you're right there. It's like, I'm going to throw myself off and crash. Just wait and then pass on the straight. Uh, you can see how fast they did that too. So it was like, they're real sensitive in that room. The hell? You want to be through kick, kick? Like, what the hell? You got ADD, man? What the hell's wrong with you? Oh, I have set up here. Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, okay. FR setup. Basically, we got. All right. So it's a wee bit more acceleration. Oh boy. Monkeys. Monkey, 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 monkeys. Saying Gran Turismo, saying AC. I remember saying on a I I absolutely re retract my statement with saying that AC had a better <laughs> community with behavior. Like I absolutely openly wrong. Retract that statement. No. It's just as bad. They are equally as bad. All clear. Stay behind the line. We've got three minutes to do the business. Oh, crap. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, we're here nine. Somehow they don't give me a penalty for doing that. Too much in the stair. Far left. Still there. Clear left. Way too much on the stair. Crap. Yeah. Hmm. It's to the opposite. Okay, well, that's about as far as it goes anyway. Okay. Okay. Okay, should be okay. Should. Right side, clear right. So it looks like they allow me to cut through once I get a little bit of Whoa, okay, that's not good. Clear left. 
Taking your left front into the Andretti hairpin. Right side. Clear right. Side. Hold your line, clear left. I missed it all. Something about it understeer. Yellow flag. Come on. Come on, come on. The leader's just done a 124.08. On your left, clear left. Jesus has a wide turn rate. Right. Yeah, it's not good. I like that. It's unstable coming in. That's the end of the session. Thirteenth place. Should help a little something. supposed to be our final for the eve um things we're gonna say um i have to find a way <laughs> around this lfm issue uh see an acc i'm having trouble we're ranking up because of morons and of course the tire slip issues which um glad i'm not the only one that's noted them 
seen them all over forums, and it seems to be a issue people are noting, a lot are dealing with, a lot are not. This one doesn't have the same issue, but you're still going to deal with the morons. So, uh, I'm trying to find a happy medium <laughs> between finding ranking officially, which has to be on AC, most likely, not ACC, because I've had to go through the fighting the game and the people. I would just fight the people. Um, trying to find a balance between that. And it seems like I might have to just stick with AC here and just go through the growing pains of dealing with. Uh, place. Get ready. Time to focus. That person just fly in their car uh, and deal with the growing pains of knuckleheads, essentially. So, yeah. this what the hell some what the hell dude jumped the line and hit me Here we go. Come on, come on. Left side. Of course, just dive in. So you already see I'm already in. Just dive in on the inside, why don't you? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. On your left. Hold right in front of me. Now that would <laughs> serve me getting kicked. Oh, with that instability coming in. What is that? Right. Right. Why did you come on, dude? He keeps cutting in front of me and he keeps getting... now that was that was on him. The hell? This is a sloppy night. <laughs> See why nobody really chooses this uh this email. This turn radius weird.
incident in the Andretti hairpin. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Mitt! Too close to the right side. It's not a good night. Come on. I'm like right. doing it straight. Why are you. Left side. Like, I went in to give you space and you still jammed me. This guy. Okay, Paul. Ten minutes to go. That's ten minutes left. Come on, man. Keep pushing. I'm gonna get a. Uh... Well, yeah. Wait, I had a jump start. No, I didn't. Oh, cause the idiot pushed me. That's right. So I got a jump start penalty for something I didn't even do. All right, that's enough for tonight. That's just stupid. <laughs> the dude jump start and jammed me. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, what? Whatever. All right, well, we got some progress today, which was mostly the tutorial. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been a very interesting evening, to say the least. But um, I do appreciate you guys jumping in. Uh, at least uh, check out the opening tutorial, at least with... Um, Editing, the basics for the three-point editing, the overall navigation of the menus, and just understanding the concept of how to get from one point to the next. The next one we'll go over, we'll go over some more detail as far as basic effects and color correction. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to start hosting much more robust and in-depth tutorials on project specific editing, uh, color grading, uh, color grading through After Effects and motion graphics. And that's gonna be on my Patreon. So we're gonna have that up pretty soon. So in any case, thank you. <laughs> Pardon the craziness. You know, it is what it is when it comes to the gaming. But um, love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And um, that's all I got. So have a good night.